from Krimer Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Global diamond manufacturer and trader Plachnik Diamond Company has made a re-entry into the South African market by partnering with a local entrepreneur to open a diamond cutting and polishing facility in Bedford View. Malene Arnoldi attended the launch. The partnership between Pluchenik and Nungu Diamonds founder Kiale Borja Pule resulted from an enterprise development program of diamond miner De Beers. Pluchenik is one of the largest buyers of rough diamonds globally and has been a De Beers site holder for more than 60 years. Pule, who will now serve as MD4 Pluchenik South Africa, says a partnership between a small business owner and a corporate group is not just good for the diamond industry, but for the whole of South Africa, allowing previously disadvantaged individuals to be active participants in the trade from mine to market. He discusses how many jobs have been created, which includes international cutting and polishing experts who will help train local people. So we're going to start off with 30 polishers, uh, cutters and polishers. Unfortunately, South Africa has had a decline in the numbers of, uh, in, in job numbers in general, not just cutting and polishing. A lot of businesses have closed down. But what we want to do is start by first thinking about how sustainable we ought to be to grow going into the future. So we're not going to, to start with 200 people and create expectations that we can't meet. We're being reasonable at first in, in terms of how, how we start. So 30 people first. It will be 30 people who are cutting and polishing diamonds, so on the bench. And there will be about five people who are in management. So a total of 35 people that are going to be employed by Pluchenic here. So we're, we're going to first start with about 400 carats with the 30 people that we have. And these 400 carats are of two to four characters in the rough. So these diamonds would manufacture anything between a 0.9 carat and a one and a half carat. Um, and we, we, we intend on growing quite aggressively. Um, I, I have a standing uh, contract with DBS at the moment as Nungu Diamonds to receive supply from them. We are in the process of negotiating a contract for Pluchenic South Africa to ensure that we ramp up as we move forward. So we have this interview again in January. Uh, perhaps the story will be a very different one. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a very ambitious young man, so we'll be in touch again in January and I'll be telling a different story altogether. Pluchenic was initially established in South Africa in 1948, before migrating its headquarters to Belgium a few decades later. It also has a diamond cutting and polishing facility in Namibia, Botswana and Lesotho. Pluchenic CEO Chaim Pluchenic unpacks the reason for the group's confidence in re-entering the South African market and hopes for the factory to expand. The truth of the matter, I already wanted a long time ago, I have a lot of nostalgia for South Africa, because this was in fact where my late father started the diamond business in 1948. Uh, we were looking for opportunities. We wanted to make sure that if we start, it will be really a success. And we felt now, of course, with the blessings of the beers, to start now, even though we're after a crisis, but we have a lot of, we believe a lot in the beers. They are the custodians of the diamond industry worldwide. They've proven themselves in the last two recessions in 2008 and the last one now, last year, how they refrain from selling. And we can see that our business is, has not, I think I don't remember many years, has been so successful like it's now. So when we have full confidence in our suppliers, we have also been very uh, satisfied and uh, in Botswana with our beneficiation, in Namibia with beneficiation. So why not in South Africa, which is our first start from the company. We plan to duplicate what we have in Botswana and in Namibia. And in, in Botswana, we have a factory for almost 200 polishers. In Namibia as well, not so, but almost uh, over 140 polishers. We like to have locals running the factory, fewer expatriates in the beginning, but later on, like in Namibia, we have no more expat. Every department is being run by managers, local ones, like we have two managers which came here from Botswana, started in the beginning as just from school, and today they're running part of the operation. So we're encouraging very much the locals to take over. Meanwhile, De Beers will continue to support the partnership through the supply of raw diamonds. 
The BS Global Sightholder Sales Executive VP Paul Rowley says the partnership between Pule and Plutinic speaks to sustainability. It's a lot of uh, beneficiation, a lot of requirements and a lot of ambitious attempts in the past to move forward, particularly with uh, historically disadvantaged South Africans. And the diamond industry isn't an easy one to get into and it requires certain amounts of capital. And, uh, and particularly if you're going to operate in a large scale business with downstream distribution, as much as we've tried to, uh, to establish an entrepreneurship program, I think the opportunity to partner with one of our truly established site holders in Plachenic, one of our uh, global players, then that gives that step up, that acceleration of that opportunity. And we start to see a real collaboration coming together, which I think will, uh, will see tr strong success, but perhaps more importantly, sustainability. And that's a strong thing we want to see. We'd like to see beneficiation here today, but very much into the future, uh, particularly we're here within South Africa. Since Plutinic is based in Belgium, a new factory opening elsewhere helps to support diamond sales in Antwerp, the diamond trading capital of the world. Belgium ambassador to South Africa Didier van der Hasselt comments on the significance of the partnership between the countries in terms of trade. As you probably know, Belgium, um, Belgium is, is responsible for, for like, is a major hub in, in, in uh, diamond trade. 80% of the rough is traded in Antwerp, 60% of the polished. So it's quite an important industry. Um, also here in South Africa, the diamond industry uh, almost found its roots a uh, long time ago. And so this partnership between South Africa and Belgium I is really important. Uh, it has a historical uh, background, but it's uh, nowadays still very important in terms of trade. Um, 49% uh, of our trade, of the export of South Africa to Belgium are precious stones. So just to give you an idea um, of the importance of, of that in our bilateral trade, I mean, we, uh, thanks to the precious stones, we are ahead of France and Spain as an export destination uh, for South Africa. So it's uh, in a bilateral economic context, is uh, diamond and precious stones trade is very, very important. And then on a more uh, micro level, of course, uh, we are very happy that this very well-established uh, company, Pluznik, uh, is partnering here uh, with local companies. I mean, it is very important for the South African government to work on beneficiation, to have more added value here. Um, we, um, as a Belgian government, I mean, we, we support that. Um, in, the, in the value chain, all the countries have to have, um, have, to have uh, their part and their role. And so um, I think it's, it's very important uh, that uh, this uh, polishing and cutting factory is opening uh, here today. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.